Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. Uh, there we go. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Uh, there's an open house on Saturday, day after tomorrow, August 17th. Uh, come by and meet your National Weather Service hydrologists and meteorologists and can see uh, what goes on. And that's on uh, 6930 Sand Lake Road is the address, location of the office. That's on Sand Lake Road, but obviously with the address there, that's off Raspberry. And uh, anyway, it's open from, let's see, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. On to the warning graphics here. We've got, uh, or hazardous weather graphic, we've got a warning on the graphic. Flood warning there for uh, Mendenhall Lake, and that's out until, or I'm sorry, not Mendenhall Lake, Mendenhall Lake River there in that zone. That's out until about uh, 10 a.m. Friday. Uh, due to the heavy rain they've received, uh, up to two and a half inches falling in the last 12 hours up in this area. Actually, same amounts all the way down. Actually, about two and a half inches falling 12-hour periods today down along some of the uh, southern areas there, like around uh, Ketchikan. For example, two and a half inches of rain in the last 12 hours. Anyway, the uh, flood, flood warning out again until 10 a.m. Friday morning. Flood stage is 9.3 feet, and it's uh, at least a 10.3 feet, maybe even higher than that. And uh, rain will be tapering off considerably overnight tonight and this evening as that front uh, slowly edges eastward and continues to weaken. Rainfall amounts definitely will be less. Moving on to satellite imagery, you can see the uh, band of clouds right through here uh, streaming northward. See the moisture is starting to really cut off down around the Queen Charlotte. It's also back to the west here. Uh, Sitka only picking up about uh, four tenths of an inch in the last 12 hours today, while by contrast farther to the east over toward uh, Petersburg or so, they picked up uh, oh, around uh, one and two thirds inches of precipitation during that same time period. And also back to the northwest here, lighter amounts. Uh, Yakutown only a quarter of an inch. Have some clouds and maybe a few showers here over the Copper River Basin. And early on, the clouds back into northern Cook Inlet. That's all starting to decrease now. Higher pressure building in back here to the southwest and uh, clearing it out. Places like uh, Iliamna on down to Kodiak Island. Uh, breezy conditions as well. Iliamna gusts 30 miles an hour. Same thing at Okiok and breezy Kodiak State Airport, where temperatures approaching 70 degrees this afternoon in sunshine with mostly clear skies up into Southern Cook Inlet. Areas back here to the, uh, well, areas back to the Northwest, mostly that's on the lee side of the uh, Alaska Range. Clouds and some light precipitation occurring today over the Southwest interior. Heavier batch out here uh, near St. Lawrence Island along the coast. Not really much precipitation reported either at Savunga or Gamble today. And we got some clouds up there along the Arctic coast that brought a hundredth of an inch of precipitation earlier today at Barrow. Uh, Mid-afternoon, nobody's reporting uh, precipitation or fog along the Arctic coast. Isolated showers here along the Eastern Brooks Range area. That's about it. Sky's starting to clear out here, uh, as I mentioned, for uh, Northeast Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island. And into the central interior, starting to see some sun breaks showing up along the south coast of the Kenai Peninsula as well. Prince William Sound, maybe a few breaks. And then the heavy rain associated with this front, very slow moving, but really starting to weaken considerably now. And the moisture source about exhausted. So uh, much lighter rainfall amounts coming up uh, for tonight and definitely tomorrow. But the flood warning continues out until 10 a.m. And then this uh, system here, that... Uh, uh, bringing about a third of an inch of precipitation into Unalaska today with the uh, frontal boundary there into the Alaska Peninsula, uh, some precipitation as well. And then this weak system up here near the Bering Strait, that uh, brought about 1,500 of an inch to Nome 
during the day today are some scattered showers into the Mulatto Hills. Scattered showers, mostly cloudy or cloudy skies over the Yukon Delta. Looks like a few breaks showing up over the Cuscoam Delta with some fog over the Bering Sea and drier conditions, very light winds out here over the western Aleutian areas. And for the forecast for tonight, it looks like a trough will drop down from the northwest and bring a chance of uh, fog, rain, drizzle there to the mainly the central and east side of the Beaufort Sea coast there with uh, IFR conditions accompanying that. Otherwise, the interior here will be uh, generally seeing a decrease in the cloudiness, higher pressure aloft moving through, uh, weak high pressure, southwest flow pushing this moisture <clears throat> right into the up to the Aleutian Range, approaching uh, Sitkanak, Akiak late tonight. Chance of rain increases. Wet for the prayer lofts, wet for the eastern Aleutians uh, uh, with brisk southwest winds, but not too strong, and very wet for the Alaska Peninsula as well, drying out farther to the west. It'll be pretty showery, cloudy, and uh, still IFR for the central Aleutians, maybe uh, possible clearing, but definitely drier out to the west with very light winds over the western Aleutians up into the northern Bering Sea area and the interior. No wind at all to speak of occurring, no gradient with that. So I have a weak trough off the coast. I'll keep a chance of showers in along the north coast. You can see the southern areas drying out as that front really weakens into just a narrow trough here with a trough with a narrow band of precipitation with it. Now just about all into uh, Canada as we approach morning on Friday. And then for Friday, you'll see this system under good southwest flow pushes uh, rainfall into southern Cook Inlet, Kamishak Bay, Kachemak Bay, and uh, of course Homer probably won't reach the Kenai area. It'll be starting out uh, sunny tomorrow morning, or mostly it will be dry. There could be some low clouds around in some areas, but it'll generally be sunny. And then look for the mid and high level clouds increase uh, pretty rapidly across Cook Inlet here, again with the rainfall coming up, rain into southern Cusquam Valley, and then areas of light rain and drizzle up to the north there across Norton Sound, the Yukon Delta, to the Seward Peninsula. But the Koyukuk Valley, Selwick Valley, all the way over to the upper Yukon should be mostly sunny. Possible showers of that weak disturbance uh, up in the northeast, but nothing significant. Low clouds, fog along the Arctic coast, maybe some clearing over the north slope. Mostly sunny, southern panhandle tomorrow, uh, drying out definitely. But that weak trough uh, we saw off the coast tonight, that'll keep the showers in as it moves in. Uh, light showers here over the central and northern areas of the panhandle with uh, still maybe a sunbreak or two. But out to the west, not much going on out here. Light winds, low clouds, fog, less IFR over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. And then for Sunday, Pretty good warm front drives northward here, bringing uh, looks like moderate to heavy amounts of rain on the lee side or the I'm sorry the uh, windward side, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, on over to uh, maybe the eastern Aleutians, far as this uh, sand point. Otherwise, over toward Kodiak, uh, more of a typical warm front type uh, pattern, low clouds, fog, drizzle, IFR, flying conditions, possibly low IFR from uh, southern Kodiak Island along these. Uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. Rain spreading in across Bristol Bay, King Salmon, up uh, definitely in the southwest interior, back across Dillingham, Togiak, and maybe up to uh, Pedro Bay, Iliamna, increasing chances of rain with this next system. The first one really washes out, uh, leaves some mostly cloudy skies with showers in across uh, the central interior of the Cusquam Valley into the central Tanana Valley, just isolated showers with 40 mile country, mostly sunny. Upper Yukon Valley into the Koyukuk and even the North Slope uh, could see some partly and mostly sunny skies while low clouds and fog linger along the Arctic coast. And a weak low here, 1,005 millibars. That'll keep it damp and unsettled from the Seward Peninsula up in toward Kotzebue Sound, the northwest coast. And of course, the Bering Strait locations there, but uh, this system really very weak, just a chance of a shower or two around Eagle and as uh, possibly over the White Mountains, and that's about it, partly mostly sunny for the mid and upper Tanana Valley areas, as well as the southern panhandle. North-northwest flow should be a mostly sunny day, maybe a few more clouds on the south coast. Definitely more clouds up north, but dry with an increasing chance of a little moisture reaching possibly Elfin Cove uh, in the afternoon, more than likely though for Sitka with uh, light rain, fog, and drizzle from Yakutat uh, into Cordova, northeast Bristol, or I mean, <laughs> northeast Prince William Sound, and westward 
to possibly portage, but uh, turning an arm, South Central Alaska, or actually Northern Cook Inlet, Southern Susitna Valley, Manuska Valley, maybe a partly sunny afternoon with uh, showers down over towards uh, Seldovia and the Homer area. And taking a look at the overnight low temperatures for tonight, it's in the southeast, uh, 50s, lower 50s on the coast, upper 50s down to the south, upper or mid 40s for the Copper River Basin, and uh, mid 30s there around Eagle to uh, Northway and Toke, lower 40s, mid 40s, Tanana Valley. Actually, seen some 30s showing up here uh, from Tanana up to Bettles, and then mid to upper 30s for the Brooks Range. Really about the same what you've seen, lower 30s for the Arctic Coast. And uh, upper 40s here for the southwest, all the way to the uh, Pribilofs, low 40s, St. Lawrence Island, 45 to 50 for the western central Aleutians, lower 50s to mid, mid 50s, a for Alaska, the Alaska Peninsula area. Highs for tomorrow, mid 60s, 65, 67, possibly in the central Tanana Valley area, mid 60s, upper Yukon, and then cooling back toward the mid 50s for the Seward Peninsula. Arctic coast, uh, upper 30s, central and east side with uh, mid 40s for the north slope to near 50 in, or definitely in the 50s for the Brooks Range and the Panhandle, 60s. And then for the low Saturday morning, 50s for the southeast coast here, 45 or 50 to 55. Upper 30s, lower 40s, eastern interior, upper 30s for the Brooks Range and lower 30s there for the Arctic coast, lower 50s, Bristol Bay. Highs shaping up like this. Uh, Again, warmest, more sunshine over the southern panel, 65, 6 or 7 again down south, closer to 60 up north, 60 to 65, south central Alaska, 65 to 67 or 8 up over the eastern central interior, near 50 out toward the coast and over the Bering Sea. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First uh, aviation graphic showing lots of IFR as usual out here. Over the Bering Sea, the Aleutians to the Alaska Peninsula, pushing up toward Kodiak Island and in uh, making its way to about Cape Newenham here on the coast. Marginal VFR till you get to the Bering Strait, IFR up across Point Hope, Cape Lisbon, all along the Arctic coast. VFR interior, IFR in the Panhandle. And for the afternoon, we lose the IFR down here over the southeast coast. Actually, some VFR breaking out uh, areas of the inside waters and a little more extensive down toward Dixon entrance with marginal VFR, Eastern Gulf, right up into the coast range and the Copper River Basin, especially over the Wrangell Mountains, as well as South Central Alaska. This all uh, slipping up in the afternoon will be rapidly in that southwest flow. So conditions will be deteriorating from southwest to northeast uh, throughout the entire afternoon and then staying VFR over the central eastern interior and IFR lifting off the Arctic coast. Less, mar less IFR here over the northern Bering Sea, but still pretty well socked in down to the south and across all the Aleutians. Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, uh, Togiak Bay there right into the southwest mountains and IFR developing there along the southern western Alaska range. And then for Saturday morning, even more IFR, more moisture flowing on in, uh, really looks uh, socked in here. Western Cook Inlet across the Alaska range up to the uh, southern slopes of the central Alaska range. IFR, Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, south and east, over to the Wrangell Mountains, including Cordova, Yakutat, IFR, VFR here north of the Alaska Range, so uh, 40 mile country, U Upper Yukon Valley, Koyukuk, Kobuk, on out to Kotzebue Sound, look pretty good for the morning hours. IFR along the Arctic coast, afternoon, not much change up there. West side improves a little bit there. Otherwise, uh, I, VFR here, No Attack Valley, Western North Slope, Western Brooks Range, eastward across the Yukon Flats, becoming, trying to become marginal VFR in the Tanana Valley. Definitely marginal here through Cook Inlet with IFR along the Western Alaska Range. IFR holds in North Gulf Coast to uh, about Elfin Cove. And then we've got uh, VFR here, Central and Southern Panhandle. And IFR, again, uh, up to Togiak Bay there, Cape Newenham, Eastern Aleutians, all the way out to Adak. And for passes, tomorrow, Anatovic, pretty good VFR for both Anatovic and Attigan with uh, Lake Clark and Merrill VFR becoming IFR uh, throughout mainly in the afternoon or late afternoon, but moisture will be increasing quite rapidly, so ceiling visibility is coming down uh, throughout the day. And rainy, same trend, but only becoming marginal there, the moisture farther to the southwest. Windy, though, should stay VFR, even though you see definitely increase in the clouds 
uh, in the afternoon hours. And for Isabel, VFR, Mentesta, starting out marginal becoming VFR. Tanita, VFR, and Portage, also looking pretty good with VFR flying. Chilkoot and White, IFR becoming marginal. Freezing levels, six to 8,000 feet here, or actually six to 12,000 across southern Alaska, down into the southern panhandle areas, and 12,000 feet central Aleutians, two to four there from the Brooks Islands, the Arctic coast. Icing, moisture sliding northeastward throughout the day. Uh, Kodiak Island, southwest coast, pushing into the southern Kuskokwim Valley, the Alaska Peninsula, and diminishing out here over the eastern Aleutians. Jet stream, southwest flow, 50 to 60 knots, about 120 out of the west or south of the Aleutians. Ridging coming up, temporary break here uh, over southern Alaska and uh, a little bit in the interior, northwest 70 along the Arctic, or along the panhandle. And for uh, 9,000 foot winds, low pushing into the southeast bearing there. So uh, 40 to 50 knot winds, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, especially on the south side there, coming up increasing 25 to 35 Kodiak Island, ridging lighter winds over the interior, but that whole pattern shifting eastward, light winds on the Arctic coast, ridging behind this system over the central Aleutians, 3,000 feet uh, ridging into the panhandle late in the day at this elevation, and then southwest flow again, look for a rapid increase in the moisture in the afternoon here across southern Alaska, 1525 along the southwest, light over the interior, and turbulence-wise, occasional moderate chop here, the Aleutian range all the way down the Alaska Peninsula of the Eastern Aleutians with light increasing turbulence for Kodiak Island. And that'll also be on the increase for Southern Cook Inlet and the Kenai Peninsula. And also increasing here along the Southwest Coast, light to isolated moderate turbulence, especially for small aircraft uh, here for, uh, well, from Bristol Bay on up toward Togiak, um, Togiak to Nunavak Island and after the break, I will return with the marine forecasts. A rainbow of planets. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. I think the best way to really get into astronomy is by discovering the planets. Totally. And this month, it's super easy to find four of them, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. Now that may seem like a weird order to put the planets in, but that's the order in which they will be lined up nicely in August. In fact, planets like to line up. It's kind of what they do. And the planets can often be found on or near this line in the sky we call the ecliptic. And those four planets, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, are so evenly spaced across the ecliptic that they make an arc from the western horizon over to the southern sky and then down to the east. When I connect the dots on the planets, I imagine an interplanetary rainbow arcing across the sky. Let's connect the dots and show you how to find the four fabulous planets of summer. Okay, we're facing west at 9.30 p.m. The sun has just gone down and the first stars are popping out. That one is Venus and there is nothing quite like it in the sky. Venus is dazzlingly bright. There's two reasons for this. One, Venus is relatively close to us, only about 68 million miles away. And two, Venus is covered in highly reflective clouds, so it bounces a whole lot of sunlight toward Earth. It's really cool to think that planets only shine because of the sun. They don't generate any light of their own. Instead, sunlight travels millions of miles, hits their surfaces, and bounces back to our eyes. We want you to look for Venus first, because as we get closer to 10 p.m., it will be barely above the horizon in the west. You'll have plenty more time to spot the other three planets. So, we often go planet hunting from right to left, or west to east. Now we're facing the southwest, and that brings us to planet number two, and it's a biggie. This is the largest planet in the solar system, holder of 69 moons and a great red spot. That's Jupiter. Jupiter, although not nearly as bright as Venus, is brighter than any other star in the sky. So finding it with the naked eye is super easy. Remember how we were talking about how the planets like to line up along the ecliptic? Well, let's add that imaginary line. 
and we'll see that it almost connects the dots between Venus and Jupiter. And if we keep following the rainbow-like arc of the ecliptic, we'll reach the yellow brick road. No, 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 we'll reach the other two planets. We're now facing south-southeast at 10 p.m. and following the ecliptic from right to left, we come to our next planet and it is my favorite. That's right, Dean. This unassuming yellow-looking star is actually the planet with the biggest ring system, 62 moons, and looks just awesome in a telescope. That is Saturn. Please, please, please get to know this planet this summer. And try, try, try to view Saturn through a telescope this summer for a view like this. It's so perfect that it looks fake, but that's the real thing. Our last stop on our rainbow of planets takes us to the one that is farthest from the ecliptic. It just has to be difficult. <laughs> Indeed, and warlike, and reddish. <laughs> and if those clues weren't enough, that, my friends, is the planet Mars. Wow, it is really bright, almost as bright as Venus. That's right, it was at its closest approach to Earth last month and is still incredibly bright. What a lineup. From right to left, you'll see Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. And when you planet gaze on the nights of August 13th through the 23rd, don't be surprised to see the waxing moon near one planet or another. Now, finding the planets for yourself is a treat, but it's even better if you share that knowledge with friends and family. Take it from us, when you show someone a planet, they will think it and you are really cool. And coolness awaits when you keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, today's sea ice analysis, not a lot different from what we've been seeing. Uh, you know, a little bit farther back, the heavier pack ice have farther north from central coast than it has been, even a little bit off the east side here. And uh, northerly flow uh, back across the Chuck Sea, light northerly flow for the next few days, that's going to uh, allow the ice heads to kind of... Uh, press southward a little bit, but whatever pulls off, it'll be spreading out and then melting in the warmer waters of the Chuck Sea Sea for the next four or five days. Moving on to coastal water forecasts here, light west winds, 10 knots, north and central coast of the Pan and northwest 15 on the south coast, same thing for Clarence Strait, south 10 for Dixon Entrance, I'm sorry, south 10 for Stevens Passage, and south 20 knots for northern Lynn Canal, the four-foot seas. And then for Saturday, pick up in the wind, small craft advisories, northwest 25 here for the south coast, 5 to 6 foot seas, and west southwest 15 to 20 for the north coast. Lynn Canal, small craft advisories, south winds 25 knots, 5 foot seas, northwest 15, Stevens Passage and Clarence Strait, northwest of 20. Prince William Sound, east at 15 tomorrow, just 2 foot seas, otherwise south to southwest 15 knots for the north Gulf Coast with about 5 foot seas, southwest 20 for the Barrens, seas 5 feet. And small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay, 25 knot winds there. Otherwise, Cook Inlet, south southeast, uh, pretty light, 10 knots with seas at two feet. And then the forecast for Saturday, southerlies for Cook Inlet, uh, not a lot changed, light winds, slight seas, southeast 20 Kamishak Bay, south 20 eight foot seas for the Barren Islands, and south winds at 20 knots with seven foot seas for the North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, northeast 15, seas three feet. Kodiak Island, uh, 25 knot small craft advisory level winds tomorrow from the south southwest. Seas running six to eight feet. And then Sitkanak to Castle or Cape Sarachev, south winds 25 to 30 knots. Good small craft advisories there with seas up to 11 feet. Small crafts on the north side of the peninsula, seas seven feet for those southerly winds. Southeast 20 for Bristol Bay with seas at about six feet. And taking a look at uh, outlook for Saturday. We've got south winds at 15 for Bristol Bay, with seas at about 5 feet. Uh, southerlies, 30 knots, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, and then Castle Cape to Sitkanak, southwest at 30, 25 knot winds on the east side of Kodiak, Shelikov Strait, south at 20 knots, southeast 20 on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Fox Islands, tomorrow, southwest, 25, seas 7 to 11 feet, 
and uh, north to northwest, 15 to 20, so lighter ones for the Adak Atka area with seas as high as possibly eight feet, and then more lighter and variable out to the west uh, at 10 to 15 knots. And then for Saturday, southeast, very light, Kiska Island to Shimia, 10 knots, north 20 knots here in toward the uh, central Aleutian areas. And then for the Fox Islands, uh, kind of a east, southeast to southerly wind direction, as high as 30 knots with a small craft of iseries existing on the uh, southern zones there with seas running 9 to 13 feet. Southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft of iseries for east winds at 25, seas 7 feet, northeast 20, north of the island with 5 foot seas. And for uh, St. Lawrence Island, Norton Sound, southerly is pretty light at 10 knots, north 20 for the Pervolos, north 15 for St. Matthew Island. Outlook for Saturday, northeast 10 for Norton Sound. Otherwise, uh, north to northwest, 15 knots, St. Lawrence Island here into the northern Bering Sea, north of Nunavak Island, southeast 15 south of uh, the island, northeast 20 for the Pervolos with 5 foot seas. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast for tomorrow, west 10 to 15 knots. Really light winds here on the central coast, turning northeast 10 to increasing to 15 knots there around, uh, say, Cape uh, Beaufort to Cape Thompson, becoming more easterly here for the Chukchi Sea. Outlook for Saturday, northeast 15 for the Chukchi Sea, and then from Cape Thompson up the west side, northeast at 20. Uh, staying fairly light there on the central coast, light northwest breeze at 10, westerly breezes at 10 for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And for tonight, uh, pretty nice over the interior with uh, clouds tending to decrease, especially Cook Inlet and across southern Alaska. Rainfall really decreases here over the panhandle, but the flood warning stays out until 10 a.m. Friday. But look for even some possible clearing. Uh, this week, trough keeps a chance of showers up to the north. That'll swing in tomorrow, but mostly sunny down south. And rain spreads into Kodiak Island with, and across the southwest interior. Mostly sunny to start the day, south central Alaska north and eastward, and then that changes. Another warm front brings more rain in to the Alaska Peninsula. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.